Hi. Hi! Welcome back to Rich Bag Creations. Today we're going to make the walnuts for Gryffindor and Ravenclaw. So if you haven't seen the video yet, I made Hufflepuff and Slytherin last week. So click the link above me right here. And today we're just going to make a huge shout out to Max before we get started. He is the cameraman, technical, technical edit, you know, all the fancy stuff that goes on behind Rich Bag Creations. So Max, what you want to say? Yeah, first off, hello. My name is Max, as you heard. and. I just made a short documentary about Cecilia, which is really short, it's one minute. And it's part of a competition to win some more filming equipment and such, because we need a change. And the way to win it, so to say, is to give it a like, and if you watch it and you like it, happily do like it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm not gonna disturb you anymore, so let's get back to making. So that's that, so if you want to see that video, it's in the description box below. So, let's get started. First of all, I'm just going to start with Gryffindor. I have a piece of clay and one of these. If you wonder how I made these and you haven't seen the previous video, it's in there. So you can go check that one out. First of all, I'm just going to squeeze on a ball of clay. I'm doing this one a little bit different than the other ones. I There I started sculpting a figure before I attached it, but um, here I'm just going to do the opposite and attach the lump of clay before I start sculpting it. So once you attach it here, you just want to start by squeezing the clay out into a bigger circle. I'm doing this as a base for the lion, and after I'm happy with the basic shape, I'm going to start by sculpting a line onto the surface of the circle. So I just continue by adding a blob of clay, which is going to be the snout and the main part of the face eventually. I'm just going to add that on and then slowly work out the mane and the face structure. And now I'm starting to squeeze out something that has a sort of line shape to it. Pressing a little bit inwards where the eyes are going to be. Making the snout or mule and then working on the nose and mouth area. If it's easier, you can always just make some basic guidelines to help you visualize what the end result is going to be. Just to help you along the way. So right now I'm just trying to make a basic nose, mouth and eyes just to see where I roughly want things to be and to see if I need to push push things out or push things inwards. So I just have the basic shape and I'm going to start working out the details, making some eyes and working on the depth of the nose and mouth. Then eventually I'm going to start on the hair. So from the nose, it has a little bit of a thing going to the side. And they don't really have this line, but I just want to accentuate that. It sort of goes inwards from that line and up to the nose. So I'm just going to make a pretty strong line there now and just try to smooth it out. As I add more details, this one's sort of just a different shape between the top of the nose to the bottom. The nose has a line going through it, and it goes down into the mouth, and then the bottom jaw is a little bit smaller than the top jaw. It's more furry, but it's sticking a little bit less out from the side than the front. That is sort of the basic lines of the nose and mouth part. For nostrils, you just want to push up the little nostrils to create that shape that a lion has. And for the eyes, you just want to start sculpting small circles and then make that cat-like we going out from the eyes 
Then maybe add on a little bit more clay for the eyebrows so it looks a little bit more tough than what it is at the moment. So you just want to work on it. And just slowly adding on pieces until you get a result that you're happy with. So I'm pretty much done with the face. It's not that difficult. It's two eyes making some eyebrows. The little nose with some small lines going to the eyes. And then a little mouth. To prep off the hair, I'm just making some ridges to make it an uneven surface. Then taking a piece of clay, rolling it out. I'm just going to cut some small pieces really quickly. Rolling them into a tip. Like this. Putting them on in a uneven circle around the perimeter of the face. Just adding them on like this. And sort of tilting them downwards in the bottom towards the neck. And further up for the face, I'm going to have the hairs going a little bit more outwards from a V point in the forehead. So after I'm adding some hairs, they don't have to be even. I'm just going to push down the ends of the hair into the sculpture like this. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to start to make some lines in the hair and under them. And then after that, I'm just going to continue making smaller lines in the transition. I'm just going to tweak the hairs around, move them until I feel I get a natural hair sort of flow and movement. You can also add more layers of hair in the back if you think it's a little bit scarce and a little bit too see-through. So just continue on working with the hair all the way around. Trying to add some small hairs here and there just to add some irregularities and making it a little bit asymmetrical. Because I feel that gives it a little bit more of a natural float. On the top here and some parts I also added some shorter hairs just so that you can actually see the ends of some hairs so it just doesn't look like spaghetti. And just pushing out some huge crevices here and there and working with the lines. And that is pretty much it. I'm going to put this in the oven at 110 Celsius for 30 minutes while I work on the other one. The last piece I'm making in the series is Ravenclaw and hopefully nobody will be disappointed that I'm making an eagle but since that is the figure of the weapon shield that is the bird of choice I'm going for. So bear with me guys and if you really want the raven then make one. <laughs> so I'm just going to attach a basic eagle shape or the beginning of one to the knob. Right now it just looks like a common wood pigeon, I guess. But it's going to look majestic in the end, hopefully. So once you attach this on, you're just going to start working out the main body of the eagle. I'm working on the back feathers and I'm going to start working on the anatomy of the neck and main face structure. I'm going to add the wings later on once I get the whole of this. So once you get a basic shape out, you want to start with the details. Right now I'm just starting with the mouth. Carefully making a line into the beak. And you might have to do it several times on the front and back side if you're making a back side. Just be careful. And perhaps squeezing a little bit shut after you made the line. That is basically it. You just tweak it around. Then for the eye, it's going to be roughly here. I'm just going to use my tool 
starting to make a little eye. And the eagle looks pretty serious and a little bit angry because it has a fold above the eye. So just trying to make that at the same time. For the tail feathers, I just went and squeezed the clay and did some of these. Then for the next part, I'm going to add some sausages a little further up, like this. Smoothing out the top. I'm going to do a little bit more than that, but I'm just going to show that to make that detail. I'm just going to use a ball tool and squeeze in to make sort of a feather shape. on top and I'm just going to build up layers along the bottom part of the eagle and I'm just going to add some feather texture on the rest of the body and after that's finished I'm going to put it in the oven because it's easier to add the wings and feet after I baked it once. For the texture for the bird I'm just making some huge bows matching the ones at the tail feathers trying to make a nice transition from the feathers upwards and as I get closer to the um, face I'm just gonna make smaller bows making some quick lines like this and after that I'm just gonna add some small lines here and there and to complete it, I'm just going to drag over it so it isn't much of a texture, just a little bit. That is it for the main body. It is ready to go in the oven. I'm going to continue with the wings and feet after that. So now I have the beginning of a foot. It's a little bit thick going into a thin line onto a thick foot again. And I'm just going to make three incisions into the bottom of the foot then I'm gonna squeeze one toe underneath the other ones and then separate the three other ones and start making some claws That's basically the design for the feet and now I'm just going to attach it onto the eagle. So once you have the legs you just want to attach them onto the eagle. And I'm just going to take a piece of clay like this and work it into the leg. Doesn't matter if it moves a little bit around you can always fix that later on. And then you're going to work it into the texture of the bird and into the leg. So for the wings, I'm just starting making a shape like this. This is going to be where it's attached to the body and this is going to be the top ridge of the front going wing that you see in front of the sculpture. Just made a basic one for the back. When you got a shade that you like, you're gonna start by marking out some um, some lines. Like this, and then you're gonna start working them into feathers. I'm just pushing in you can already see it's starting to become a little bit more feather shaped. So first of all, you're just going to do that to the entire wingspan. So after I was happy with these, I began making some lines 
going the same way all the way across the wing. And now I'm just going to do the same thing one more time. Just a little bit smaller. It doesn't have to be perfect, you can just wing it. For the wings, I just changed my mind a little bit. So I just made the circular feathers into a point. And now I'm ready to put them onto the eagle. So for this one in the oven, I just propped up the wings and the figure with some aluminum foil. And I'm just gonna take that off. Hopefully it turned out all right. It kind of did, so looking like this. So now they're both ready for some spray paint outside, hence the thick sweater, because it's really freezing outside. So that is the finished project for today. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you have any future suggestions on things that we can do, leave them in the comment down below. Additionally, if you're entering the one giveaway, make sure that I'm able to send you a message here on YouTube, since the privacy settings sometimes may inhibit me to actually send you a message. Just keep that in mind. Thank you so much for watching.